Before we come to Prime Minister's questions, I would like to point out that the British Sign Language Interpretation Proceedings is available to watch on Parliament Live TV. We start with Prime Minister's questions. Ketos. Question yeah. number one, Mr Speaker. Uh, Mr Speaker, as my right honourable friend, the Secretary of State for Northern Ireland remarked to the House earlier this morning, this Sunday marks a tragic day in our history. This was one of the darkest days of the Troubles. And I, that's the 50th anniversary of Bloody Sunday. And I echo his call to learn from the past, to reconcile and build a shared, peaceful and prosperous future. Mr Speaker, this morning I had meetings with ministerial colleagues and others. In addition to my duties in this House, I shall have further such meetings later today. I associate my remarks with the Prime Minister on Bloody Sunday. Did the Prime Minister agree to the Chancellor of the Exchequer writing off £4.3 billion of fraud? That's £154 of every household in the country. That went directly into the pockets of fraudsters. No, of course not, Mr Speaker. Uh, but what I, can, what I can tell him, uh, we, we, take, we do not support uh, fraudsters or those who steal from the public purse, Mr Speaker. Uh, but what I, can tell, what I can tell her is that everybody in this country should be very proud of the, of the huge effort that was made uh, by Lord Agnew and others uh, to secure ventilators and to secure PPE. And at the time, uh, Captain Hindsight and others were calling, were calling for us to go faster, Mr Speaker. Frank Tracy. Thank you, uh, Mr Speaker. My local hospital, the George Elliott, has recently issued all of its staff, helpers and volunteers with a medal in recognition of the work that they've done and continue to do through the COVID pandemic. Would the Prime Minister join me in thanking them all for the incredible work they've done, including the specialist teams such as palliative care, who've had to act as surrogate families for patients who relatives who've been able to, unattend, able to attend because of restrictions? And will he consider following their lead in issuing a National Service Medal for all of our key workers who've done such an outstanding job in keeping our country going through the pandemic? Prime Minister. Yes, of course, Mr Speaker. I thank my uh, honourable friend. And uh, I'm pleased that so many of the volunteers at, uh, and the staff at uh, George Elliott Hospital have been uh, recognised in the uh, Queen's New Year's Honours list. I've seen the, the medal that they uh, are proposing, and I think it's, it's lovely, uh, Mr Speaker. And as I've told the House before, uh, we're establishing a UK Commission on COVID commemoration uh, to consider how we can uh, commemorate everything that we've all been through, and the Commission will also consider how we can recognise the courage of frontline workers. We now come to the Leader of the Opposition, Keir Starmer. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. And can I join with the Prime Minister in his comments in relation to Bloody Sunday? The Ministerial Code says that ministers who knowingly mislead Parliament will be expected to offer their resignation. Does the Prime Minister believe that applies to him? Yeah. Prime Minister. Uh, Mr Speaker, of course. But let me tell the House uh, that I think he's inviting a question about uh, an investigation which has uh, you know, Mr. Speaker, I can't uh, comment, and uh, uh, which, I, which he is, as a lawyer, Mr. Speaker, will know that I that I can't comment on. And what I am focused on is delivering the fastest recovery of any European uh, uh, of any uh, European economy uh, from COVID. Uh, the uh, the fastest booster rollout, 400,000 more people on the payrolls now than there were before the pandemic began. And uh, we're launching a policy tomorrow, Mr. Speaker. Uh, he talks about he talks about uh, people being out of work. Uh, in, in my case, uh, that's what he, I, know, I understand why he wants it. We're launching a plan tomorrow, Mr. Speaker, to get half a million people off welfare into work. It's a fantastic idea. I hope he supports it. Keir Starmer. I think the Prime Minister said yes, he agrees the code does apply to him. Yes. Uh, 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 and therefore, if he misled Parliament, he must resign. Yes. Yes. On the 1st of December, the Prime Minister told this House, in relation to parties during lockdown, all guidance was followed completely in number 10 from that dispatch box. Yeah. On the 8th of December, it looks quizzical, he said it. On the 8th of December, the Prime Minister told this House, I have been repeatedly assured since these allegations emerged there was no party. 
So since he acknowledges the ministerial code applies to him, will he now resign? No, Mr Speaker. Uh, but, you know, uh, since, he asks, since, he asks, since he asks about about COVID restrictions, uh, let me just remind the House and indeed remind uh, the country that he has been relentlessly opportunistic uh, throughout. Uh, He has has flip-flopped from one side uh, to the other. Uh, He would have kept us us in lockdown in the summer, Mr Speaker. He would have taken us back into lockdown uh, at Christmas, Mr Speaker. And it's precisely because we didn't listen to Captain Hindsight uh, that we have the fastest growing economy in the G7, Mr Speaker. And we have got all the big calls right. The guy that said in hindsight he now appreciates it was a party. <laughs> we, we, we've discovered the real Captain Hindsight, haven't we, Mr Speaker? Let me spell out the. Let me spell out. They shout now. They're going to have to go out and defend some of this nonsense. <laughs> Let me spell out the significance of yesterday's developments. Sue. Oh, Sue Gray referred matter to the police, having found evidence of behaviour that's potentially a criminal offence. Prime Minister, if you do not understand the significance of what happened yesterday, then I really do despair, Absolutely. because the police. Having, Prime Minister, the police having got that material from Sue Gray, subject it to a test to decide whether to investigate. And that test was whether it was the most serious and flagrant type of breach in the rules. The police spelt out that what they meant by that, that those involved knew or ought to have known what they were doing was an offence, and that there was little ambiguity about the absence of any reasonable search. Does the Prime Minister, does the Prime Minister... This question will continue and I will hear... I will hear the question. Unfortunately, you might not believe this, but our constituents are very interested in both the questions and the answers. If some members do not wish to hear it, please leave quietly. Keir Starmer. Mr Speaker, having got the material from Sue Gray, the police had to take a decision as to whether what they had before them was the most serious and flagrant types of breach of the rules. If members want to laugh at that, laugh. The police spelt out, the police spelt out what they meant. They decided on the material they've already got that they've already got that those involved knew or ought to have known what they were doing was an offence and that there was little ambiguity around the absence of any reasonable defence. Does the Prime Minister really not understand the damage his behaviour is doing to our country? Minister. Mr Speaker, I hope that the Right Honourable Gentleman understands uh, that although the issue that he raises uh, is important, uh, there is simply no way, as he knows, as a lawyer, that I can comment on uh, the investigation that he is currently, is currently taking place. But what, I ca- but what he also knows, he talks about the most serious issue, but the, he talks about the most serious issue before uh, the public today and before the world today. It's almost as though he was in ignorance of the fact. Uh, Mr. Speaker, that we have a crisis on the borders of Ukraine, and I, I, and I, can, I can tell him, I can tell him what is actually what is going on in the cabinet room of this country is that the UK government, no, Mr. Speaker, the UK government is bringing the West together so that we have, led by this government and this Prime Minister and, and the, our Foreign Secretary and Defence Secretary, to bring the West together to have the toughest possible package of sanctions to deter President Putin from what I think would be a reckless and a catastrophic invasion. That is what this government is doing. We are getting on with the job, and I think he needs to raise his game, frankly. Can I just say honestly, (laughs) just sit, 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 can I just say to both sides, our constituent watching it, tensions are running high, and what we need to be able to do is allow the people out there who are bothered about their futures to hear what is said on both sides. So please, let's give the respect our constituents deserve. Yeah, yeah. Keir Starmer. 
Mr Speaker, this was the Prime Minister who went into hiding for five days because of these allegations. Yeah. Talk, talk to me about being around for the allegations. Mr Speaker. Can I just say I don't want to do this, but I am determined to make sure our constituents can hear. The next person that stops me hearing will not be continuing in this debate. Questions? Mr Speaker, the Prime Minister's continual defence is wait for the Sue Gray report. On the 8th of December, he told this House, I will place a copy of the report in the Library of the House of Commons. His spokesperson has repeatedly stated that means the full report, not parts of the report, not a summary of the report, not an edited copy. So can the Prime Minister confirm that he will publish the full Sue Gray report as he receives it? Minister. Mr Speaker, what I can tell him is that we've got to leave the report to the independent uh, investigator, as he knows. Uh, and of course, uh, when I receive it, I, of course I will do exactly uh, what I said. But I can, I can tell him that in the meantime, I think what the people of this country want to hear is what we're doing, uh, to, uh, what we're doing to tackle the issues that matter to all of us. Fixing fixing the cost of living, Mr Speaker, helping people across, across the country by lifting the living wage, Mr Speaker, by helping people with their fuel costs, Mr Speaker, as this government is, and by cutting the tax of people on universal credit, cutting the tax by a thousand pounds. And, Mr Speaker, that party opposite are committed to abolishing universal credit. That's their policy. Keir Starmer. Cutting the tax. <laughs> the, the, the police say the evidence as, uh, meets the test. Frankly, the public have made up their minds. They know he's not fit for the job, and that's what really matters here. Throughout this scandal, the Tories have done immense damage to public trust. When the leader of the Scottish Conservatives said the Prime Minister should resign, the leader of the House called him a lightweight. Yeah. English con English Conservatives publicly undermining the Union by treating Scotland with utter disdain. How much damage are the Prime Minister and his Cabinet prepared to do to save his skin? Yes. Minister. Uh, well, Mr Speaker, I, I think that he was uh, offering a yet more general criticism of uh, what's been going on in, in Downing Street. Let me just remind the House of what's been going on in, in Downing Street. Uh, we've been prioritising the Covid backlogs, uh, Mr Speaker, investing, investing massively in nine million more scans uh, so that people get the treatment that they need and that they've been waiting for, and making sure that we have 44,000 more people in our... Yes, for... It says it's rubbish. They didn't vote for it, Mr Speaker. They don't support it. 44,000 44, more people in our NHS now than there were in 2020, Mr Speaker. And, and we're fixing social care, Mr Speaker, which, which governments have neglected uh, for decades and laboured it absolutely. Enough. They have no plan at all to fix the NHS or to fix social care. Vote Labour. Wait longer. <laughs> the reality is that we now have the shameful spectacle of a Prime Minister of the United Kingdom being subject to a police investigation. Unable to lead the country, incapable of doing the right thing, and every day his Cabinet fails to speak out, they become more and more complicit. And what's utterly damning, despite the huff and puff, is that this is all happening when petrol prices, the weekly shop and energy bills are going through the roof. Three months ago, Labour suggested cutting VAT from energy bills. Still, the government has failed to act. Instead of getting on with their jobs, they're wheeled out to save his. Whatever he says in his statement later today or tomorrow won't change the facts. Isn't this a Prime Minister and a government that have shown nothing but contempt for the decency, honesty and respect that define this country? Prime Minister! No, Mr Speaker, uh, we love this country and we're doing everything in our power to help this country. And, and of, of, course, of course he wants me out of the way, Mr Speaker. Of course, of course he wants me out of the way. Uh, he does. Uh, and I, 
I can't, and many people, of course, of course, I, I don't deny it uh, I, for all sorts of reasons. Many people may want me out of the way, but I tell you the reason he wants me out of the way is because he knows that this government can be trusted to deliver. And, and we did. And we, and we delivered on Brexit, Mr. Speaker. He voted 48 times. He voted 48 times to take this country back into the European Union. We delivered. We did. He can't be trusted. We, we delivered the fastest vaccine rollout in Europe, uh, Mr. Speaker. And we will deliver on our plan to unite and level up across the whole of the UK. Prime down 10%, Mr. Speaker. Job vacancies at a record high. Colossal investment in. Yes, Mr. Speaker. We're delivering, and they have no plan. Three times as much tech investment as France in this country, twice as much as Germany. We have a vision for this country as the most, as the most prosperous and successful economy in Europe because we are going to unite and level up. The problem with the Labour Party today, Mr Speaker, is that he's a lawyer, not a leader. That's the truth. That's the truth, Mr Speaker. We, we've, taken, we've taken the tough decisions. I can't hear what the Prime Minister's got to say. No. I would have thought I would have thought he's the Prime Minister of this side of the House. I'm surprised that this side of the House doesn't want to listen to it, because I do. Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, I only wanted to add the point that we've taken the tough decisions, we've got the big calls right, and we're, and in particular I, am getting on with the job. Thank you, Mr Speaker. In Cluid South, the Welsh Government has been dragging its feet on urgent repairs to the Newbridge oh, Road, while in contrast, the Prime Minister and his Government have delivered record levelling up fund investment of £13.3 million along the Dee Valley, from the Trevor Basin to Langothlin and Chirk and on to Corwin. Will the Prime Minister comment on how the next phase of the levelling up fund will bring hope and prosperity to other communities right across our proud union of the United Kingdom? I thank my honourable friend very much, and what pleasure it gives me to address the member uh, for Cluid South, where I tried unsuccessfully so many uh, years ago. And I'm delighted that a Conservative government is now investing so massively in levelling up uh, in Cluid South and across the whole of Wales. We now come to the leader of the SNP, Ian Blackford. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And can I associate myself with the remarks of the Prime Minister on Bloody Sunday? And I'm sure, Mr. Speaker. You and the entire House will want to commemorate tomorrow the Holocaust Memorial Day when six million Jews lost their lives at the hands of the regime of Hitler. And of course, we remember other genocides, not least more recently in Bosnia, and we all pray for continued peace in that country. Mr. Speaker, at the heart of this matter, we have a Prime Minister who is being investigated by the police for breaking his own laws absolutely unprecedented. A man who demeans the office of Prime Minister. This is the latest in a rap sheet that is already a mile long. Illegally proroguing Parliament, misleading the House, decorating with dodgy cash, partying while the public suffered. Every moment he stays, he is dragging out the agony for families who are reminded of the sacrifices they made and dragging his party further through the dirt. The public knows it, the House knows it, even his own MPs know it. Yeah. When will the Prime Minister cop on and go? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, Mr Speaker, I, I want to say, uh, uh, join the uh, right hon. Gentleman uh, and echo his sentiments about, uh, about Holocaust Memorial Day, uh, uh, where I think he is uh, completely right. Uh, but I must say that uh, he made the same point uh, last week. Uh, he's wrong then. Uh, he's wrong now. Uh, and much as I enjoy uh, cooperating him, uh, uh, it is precisely because I enjoy uh, cooperating with him so much uh, and with all his uh, Scottish colleagues that I have absolutely no intention of doing what he suggests. Yeah. <laughs> Blackford. Mr. Speaker, every moment that the Prime Minister lingers, every nick in this death by a thousand cuts is sucking attention from the real issues facing the public. Tory cuts, Brexit and the soaring cost of living have pushed 
millions of families into poverty. The impending national insurance tax hike hangs like a guillotine while they eat cake. This is nothing short of a crisis. And the only route out, the only route to restore public trust, is for the Prime Minister to go. How much longer will Tory MPs let this go on for? How much more damage are they willing to do? It is time to get this over with. Show the Prime Minister the door. Yeah. Prime Minister. Uh, well, Mr. Speaker, I, I, I don't know where, uh, who's been eating more cake. Uh, <laughs> uh, what I would say to the, what I would say to the, uh, to the right honourable gentleman, for whom actually, Mr. Speaker, I have a, I have a, a behind the scenes. People don't get this, but actually, uh, we cooperate well, uh, and I want to continue uh, to do so. Jesse Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. As the Prime Minister will know from personal experience, the River Wye is one of the most beautiful rivers in Europe, yet its fragile ecosystem is being destroyed by phosphate and other pollution. The river crosses the border between England and Wales, but so far it has proven impossible to get the Environment Agency, Natural England and Natural Resources Wales even to begin planning a single integrated long-term strategy to clean up the river. Will the Prime Minister press those agencies now and the Welsh Government at last to come to the table and will he ask ministers to look at the idea of a new ring-fenced National Rivers Recovery Fund using fines paid by the water companies so we can clean the Y and other rivers up properly once and for all? Well, uh, Mr Speaker, I, I had a memorable swim in the wire myself, I think at about five o'clock in the morning once, and it, it tasted absolutely it tasted as, uh, abs- like, like nectar. Uh, but uh, I, I understand the problem that he raises. It's very important that our beautiful uh, rivers should be clean as well, and my honourable friend, the Environment Minister, will be visiting the Y area uh, shortly, with or without his uh, swimming trunks, and uh, I know that we're urging uh, the Welsh Government to take this matter as seriously as this Government is. Please get him in there. Sir Geoffrey Donalds. Mr Speaker, the Prime Minister will know that many families across the United Kingdom are struggling with the increased cost of living and rising energy costs. But in Northern Ireland, that is compounded by the protocol. 27 per cent is the increase in the cost of bringing goods from Great Britain to Northern Ireland when we can get access to those goods. It is costing business £2.5 million every day, almost a billion pounds a year, the cost of the protocol. The Prime Minister talks about uniting this nation and levelling up. He could do that by removing the Irish Sea border and restoring Northern Ireland's place fully within the UK internal market. Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, I must say that I support passionately the uh, indignation of, of the right honourable gentleman opposite. And, and, and yes, uh, yes, Mr Speaker, uh, I never thought uh, when we negotiated that, that this would be uh, with 200 businesses. 200 businesses have stopped supplying Northern Ireland. Foods are being blocked, Mr. Speaker. Christmas cards are being surcharged. And frankly, Mr. Speaker, the EU is implementing this in an insane and pettifogging way. Uh, and we need to sort it out. And I completely support what he's saying. Philip Dunn. As my right honourable friend, the Prime Minister, seen the report published early this month by the EAC making recommendations about what else should be done in addition to the welcome measures in the Environment Act to clean up our rivers, including the River Wye, but all our rivers. One of the recommendations was that DEFRA should give guidance to Ofwat to require water companies to invest much more in water treatment in the next round of capital spending approvals. Will he encourage his Secretary of State to give this guidance in the strategic policy statement to off what expected shortly? Prime Minister. Uh, thank you very much. Yes, Mr Speaker, my, my, my right honourable friend is completely right. I welcome the report by uh, his committee. This government is going uh, further and faster than uh, any other government uh, hitherto uh, to uh, protect and, and improve the health of our rivers and seas. Lord Russell-Moyle. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Happy unbirthday to him. Happy unbirthday to him. Because just like the Mad Hatter, he didn't need the excuse of a birthday to have a party, but it did help, didn't it? So when he had groups of people singing to him when illegal 
um, gatherings indoor were illegal and communal singing was banned. My constituents think that he has lied. My constituents think that he lied to this House, and my constituents think he lied to them when he was partying and telling them all. Order, order. In passing, what your constituents say, but you can't continue to labour that one point. Lord Russell Miles. So, I would prefer to be led by a lawyer than a liar. Will he now resign? The honourable member will be withdrawing that last comment. I withdraw it. That's what my constituents think, not mine. Right to less of that, Prime Minister. Well, I, I, I think that the, the honourable gentleman, I'm afraid, in everything he said just now, plainly doesn't know what he is talking about. He plainly doesn't know what he's talking about. But, I, but what, and I, what I can tell him, and what I can tell his uh, constituents, is that irrespective of, of what they want to focus on, and I understand why they do, Mr. Speaker, this government is going to get on with the job and deliver for the people of this country. Cheryl Murray. Mr Speaker, the great people of Cornwall voted in yeah, yeah. our Prime Minister on a promise of, to get Brexit done. Yeah. Yeah. He was successful. Yeah. Yeah. Faced with the global pandemic, our Prime Minister set out to build a world-beating vaccination programme to save lives. Mr Speaker, he was successful. He's now lifted Covid restrictions against huge pressure not to do so. And he's got the economy back on track. Can I ask my right honourable friend, the Prime Minister, will he continue to deliver on the priorities of my constituents and the millions across this country who voted for him in 2019? Mr. Speaker, I, I really can't improve on the, the, the brilliant question. Uh, the, people, the people of South East Cornwall are lucky to have uh, uh, my honourable friend uh, uh, such a representative, and she's right in what she says. Jonathan Edwards. Dear uh, Mr. Speaker, tomorrow is the second anniversary since my constituent Michael Leary was murdered and his body desecrated in an attempt to cover up the crime. Will he meet with campaigners and myself to discuss the need for a, a new offence or amended sentencing guidelines? to reflect the extra suffering faced by the families of murdered victims whose bodies were concealed or desecrated. Prime Minister. Well, I, I thank him very much for drawing this uh, appalling case to the attention of the, of the House, and I can certainly uh, assure him that he will be getting the, uh, the meeting he needs at the earliest opportunity. So, Mike Penning. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. On the 24th of November, Mr Speaker, I asked the Prime Minister if he would meet with me in a and my constituents about the future or lack of future of a new hospital in Hemel Hempstead. I thought when I put in the question today that I would have to ask the same question, but last night I was offered the meeting. <laughs> so, so on another note, Prime Minister, many children in this country are suffering from a special form of seizure which medical cannabis prescribed by a consultant actually helps them live. Only two children in this country get that free on the NHS. The rest of those children have to beg, borrow and scrape in their families to try and get that prescription issued by a consultant paid for. Can the Prime Minister please use the political will? I know the Secretary of State has the political will, but please push this forward so these children live. Prime Minister. I thank my uh, honourable friend. I'm delighted he has the meeting that, uh, uh, that he wanted. Uh, we've already changed the law to allow doctors to prescribe cannabis products where clinically uh, appropriate. But, Mr. Speaker, uh, I'm, I'm, we're very keen to support it, provided uh, the MHRA uh, is happy as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Threats and intimidation, bribery and blackmail, racism and Islamophobia. Yeah. That's the character of his government. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every day, the Prime Minister lurches from scandal to scandal. Yeah. And meanwhile, his government has written off £4.3 billion to fraudsters. Yeah. Instead of writing off loans to fraudsters, why won't the Prime Minister write his resignation to the Queen? Yeah. Yeah. Minister. Mr Speaker, uh, because I, I, let me just, she talks about racism and, uh, and Islamophobia. You look, at, look at this government, Mr Speaker. Uh, look, if you want, if you, look, at, look at the modern Conservative Party. We are the party of hope and opportunity for people across this country, 
irrespective of race or religion, and, and we don't care what religion uh, you affirm. All we care about is whether you're interested in, in ideas of aspiration and opportunity. That's what we're about. The recruitment of 20,000 police officers is a fantastic commitment to law and order by this government. Bedfordshire, in common with many other police forces, has lost out on about 95 officers as a result of the imposition of damping in 2004. So we don't have to rely on one-off special grants to stay solvent. Will the Prime Minister recommit to the reformation of the police funding formula in this Parliament. Yeah. Prime Minister. Uh, my my right hon. Uh, Policing Minister has assured me we are going to be introducing a new funding formula before the end of the Parliament, but I am pleased that Bedford, Bedfordshire Police have already recruited 100, 100 additional officers as part of our uplift programme. Uh, that is part of the 11,000 more that this Government has put on the streets. No, my Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Twice in recent months, I've asked the PM about his and his transport secretary' commitment to deliver the PM's pledge to invest in UK-built Zebs zero-emission buses. I did not receive a clear answer. Worrying reports in the media of Treasury cuts to bus buying plans highlight a conflict between the PM and his Chancellor. Prime Minister, is the current Chancellor denying you, the current Prime Minister? the right to fulfil your pledge to buy 4,000 zero-emission buses. Yeah. Uh, Minister. Uh, Mr Speaker, I don't, there's never in, in the history of this country been such a bonanza for buses. Uh, I am personally a bus uh, fanatic. We're putting £5 billion into, into buses over the, and, and cycling during this Parliament and £355 million into uh, new funding for zero emission buses. And yes, of course, we want to see the benefits of that funding spread right across the whole of the United Kingdom. Let me French. Yeah. Mr Speaker, securing extra health services at Queen Mary's Hospital, Sidcup, is a key priority for local residents, as it is for me as the first homegrown MP for Old Bexley and Sidcup. Yeah. Will the Prime Minister support me in delivering this extra investment for our local hospital and join me in thanking all of the staff at Queen Mary's for their incredible efforts? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yes, and I can't say what a joy it is to welcome the, my hon. Friend uh, to his place. Joy seems a bit confined, uh, confined on the benches opposite, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I, I thank him for his work uh, for, uh, and support for everybody at Queen Mary's Hospital, which uh, he and I campaign, have campaigned for uh, for many years. Uh, last year, Queen Mary's received £800,000 of funding, and I hope that it will benefit further uh, from the £1 million funding awarded to the Oxley's NHS Foundation Trust to improve uh, technology services across its estates. Richard Bergen. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. A nurse, a nurse who organised a small socially distanced demonstration against this government's pay cuts was fined £10,000. People out there are sick to the back teeth of it being one rule for the Tories and another for everyone else. The Prime Minister, for once, needs to do a decent thing. For God's sake, resign. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Speaker, I don't think there was a question there. Uh, there, was, there was an invitation uh, for me to do what, of course, the Labour Party. Uh, wants me to do, but I'm not going to do it, Mr. Speaker. We are going to carry on with our agenda of uniting and levelling up across the country. And, that, and they fundamentally know uh, that they have no answer to that. We have a plan and a vision for this country. They have absolutely nothing to say, and that is the difference between our side and their side. Mr. Speaker, alongside the threat of a Russian invasion of Ukraine, there are real fears of China invading Taiwan. On Sunday, Beijing staged the largest incursion into Taiwan's airspace since October. Does my right honourable friend agree with me that military aggression and threat of occupation are never acceptable anywhere in the world? And will he confirm that under this Conservative government, the UK will always be at the forefront of standing up forcefully for freedom and democracy, security and stability? Yes, I, I, I thank my honourable friend. I want to tell him that the, the Chinese military flights that have taken place near Taiwan in recent days and months are not uh, conducive to peace and stability in the region. And what we need is a peaceful and constructive dialogue by people on both sides of the Taiwan Strait. And I know uh, that that is what uh, my right honourable friend, the Foreign Secretary, uh, and, uh, and all colleagues are working for. That ends Prime Minister's questions. For those who are not staying for the UQ, please leave quietly.